So I'm over here in Salt Lake City, Utah. Uh, I got to see the beautiful Salt Lake today. Got to have a really amazing brunch. And now I'm just relaxing in the hotel room for a little bit. And I'm just kind of reflecting on all the opportunity that is in this stock market in the U.S. and all of the amazing technologies that are coming our way in the next year, two years, five years, 10 years. Technology is just such a beautiful thing. And that's kind of core to my investment philosophy. You'd be pretty hard pressed to find too many stocks in my portfolio that aren't very tech focused. And I wanted to talk about a couple stocks today. I wanted to talk about Archer and Joby Aviation. I'm a shareholder in both of these companies. And I also wanted to talk about Seals Q, LAES. And I also am very uh, much interested in this quantum and post cybersecurity company called Seals Q. And I think it's going to be one of those companies. Are, I think right now it's just the, the value isn't being attributed to the work that they're doing. Um, the stock market hasn't caught up yet, but I want to just talk about, let's, let's start with Archer. So what, what you're looking at here on the screen is you see this LA 28, LA 28. So basically Archer Aviation with their electric vertical takeoff, these uh, planes that they're building that are going to be able, they're, they're essentially just like drones, but planes also. I don't really, I always struggle to kind of explain it, but, but basically they're, they're going to fill this gap that we've never really seen before. It's been cost prohibitive to fly a helicopter because of the pilot, the gasoline, just the maintenance. So we're going to have these air taxis and Archer is going to be the official air taxi provider of the Los Angeles 2028 Olympics. And that is super cool. They also just announced, uh, they also did a, their first piloted flight with their electric air taxi. And I think I have that pulled up here. Let me see. Here we, here we are and we're watching the, the, this electric vertical taxi takeoff. 80, 85, airborne. And it looks a lot like a, uh, just a normal prop airplane. But what these are going to be able to do, my understanding is they're going to be able to also do what a helicopter does. So, so they just proved with their technology that they can do the normal airplane takeoff, which requires runway, requires air traffic control, requires all these different things. Um, whereas they'll be able to flip the prop vertically, spin those blades and then lift the aircraft just like a helicopter. So really, really cool. And we also have seen Archer was mentioned, let's see. I don't know if Archer was mentioned specifically by Trump, but this is what I saw because this is going to explain some of this after hours price action. So let's, let's look at, let's look at uh, Archer as a just, if you've been in Archer for one year, the returns you've seen, if you've been in Archer for six months, the returns you've seen and today, a nice little 9% jump. And if I move my ugly mug out of the way, look at this after market move. I think this after market move. So we closed at around 10, 14 and we're up, we're up in the low 11s. And I think it, it has something to do with this article here or this announcement. So president Donald Trump Friday signed an executive order to bolster U.S. defenses against threatening drones and to boost electric air taxis and supersonic commercial aircraft. So in three executive orders, Trump sought to enable routine use of drones beyond the visual sight of operators, a key step to enabling commercial drone deliveries and reduce U.S. reliance on Chinese drone companies. So pretty cool. And we know that 
so Archer has the LA 2028 Olympics. It's trading under, I mean, today it was under $10 a share. And these things are going to be flying all over the place. And by 2028, the stock could be a hundred a share. Who knows what, like how the free market is going to price. And that's kind of what I'm talking about. The opportunities in, in the market, like, Sure, quantum is an incredible opportunity because there's a generational technological shift and change in how we look at computing. But look at all these uh, stories that are happening in real time and all of these fun technologies that we get to talk about. And, and if we're lucky enough, invest in. Um, so Joby Aviation had a headline that moved the stock this week. Abdul Latif Jamil and Joby agreed to explore opportunities for electric aircraft in Saudi Arabia. And we know that Saudi Arabia has pretty deep pockets and Joby responded. Let's look at the the returns for Joby. So in the last year, 57 percent year to date down a little bit in the last six months down a little bit. But in the last month, as this theme has been picking up momentum yet again, we can see that there are are more in more uh, money and investment that is flowing into Joby. So w- how do you kind of look at the difference of these two companies as a very casual investor? I'm sure there's diehard Joby fans and diehard Archer fans. But for me, it's kind of similar to quantum. Like why well, bet on one horse? I'm betting on the industry. I'm betting that these electrical aerial ride sharing are going to materially change how we move around. They're going to make it easier for, for us to get from, to, from point A to point B. So why limit myself to one? These, these stocks are relatively cheap right now, but when these companies become more and more well known, when the tech matures, when they're actually providing revenue and generating economic value where people would rather get an electric air taxi and take an eight minute ride to the airport than sit in a car for an hour and 10 minutes. I mean, a lot of people value time and this is going to enable people to save a lot of time. And also my understanding is with these electrical aerial taxis, they're able to build these in ways that the catastrophic failure, if they lost power to one propeller, they're built from the ground up with lots of redundancy. So ideally, and I can't, I'm not an expert in this field, but ideally that these would also be built with a lot of safety in mind. And, And we know like we lost one of the legends of basketball, Kobe Bryant, because of a helicopter crash and whether or not that was the pilot's fault or, or malfunction, whatever, whatever it was, we know that, that aircraft, when they fall out of the sky, tend, they tend to be a lethal type of situation. So if these electrical aerial vehicles are able to move people around in a safe way, what a world changing thing that's going to be. And finally, a little shift from up in the air. Let's get down to our hardware and software. So there's a company that I think in the stock market right now is is relatively undervalued, especially compared to other stocks. And that company's name is SealsQ. And they're based out of Europe. I believe they're a they're Swiss company. Let me double check. So they are in Switzerland and they're a wise key company and they have a suite of products and services. What I'm most interested in is their post quantum chips and they have a whole section of their website about the quantum threat, which more companies, especially in this space like Arkit and other companies like quantum emotion really need to be very straightforward because I don't think people fully understand the threat of a sufficiently powerful quantum computer being able to break through our encryption and uncover secrets that were never meant to be uncovered. Credentials, passwords, financial information, government secrets, social media credentials, the list goes on and on and on. Um, so we offer a secure 
chips family that is based on risk v quantum resistant certified hardware that can be delivered to open load that can be delivered open to load your own firmware or as a pre-provisioned fips 143 tcg certified trusted platform module the only post quantum tpm a robust tcg certified tpm stack so really you know if i was their marketing department that would be very bold because this is a key differentiator for sales queue and looks like they have quite a few certifications we know that in their newsroom they just acquired IC Alps they just launched they have a satellite launch scheduled to advance quantum safe space communication they acquired 100% of IC Alps so this company is doing lots of stuff they're moving they are making things happen. And what have, re- what have investors seen from LAES? So in one year, the return has been 190%. Year to date, it's down considerably. But in six months, that's a pretty nice return. In the last month, 44%. And it even had a nice week. So if we I want to go a little deeper into the chart and show you guys why you're seeing some of those random numbers. So I'm going to hide my drawings. And what you can see is that LAS kind of got caught up in the FOMO, the zeitgeist, the quantum euphoria, the quantum frenzy, and it just jumped all the way to $10, $11 a share. And then it gapped down during the quantum crash in January on Jensen's comments that quantum computing was 30 years away. And by the way, he has completely made a full about face about that and mentioned quantum twice on NVIDIA's earnings call about 10 days ago. And not only that, he mentioned at Computex in his keynote that AI, <clears throat> that the future of supercomputing and AI, a supercomputing center is going to look like a CPU plus a GPU plus a QPU, a quantum processing unit. So very, very good for the quantum sector. And we can see there was sell-off and it just kept going down and down and down and down. And then recently, if we zoom into the chart here, we see that a bit of a rally has been started. And I'm just going to draw one line here. And those who followed the channel closely know which line I'm going to draw. So we're going to go to 388. And 388 is a number that Seals Q has had a very tough time getting over. So a lot of our quantum stocks have broken through key resistances. We saw Ion Q a month ago break through key resistances. We've seen Rigetti and QBTS, uh, D-Wave, we've seen lots of quantum stocks break key resistances, but LAS has kind of remained zone controlled in this sort of uh, 350 or less area. However, the importance of the work they're doing, insanely important, it's insanely important work. I personally know an investor who has something to the tune of 22,000 shares in this company, and he has a idea or notion that when the rest of the world figures this out, it's going to retire him. And I tend to agree. I don't have nearly that position size, but I have a healthy size position of my own money in, in sales queue and LAS. And I believe in what they're doing. I believe that in the quantum theme, the post quantum cryptography and, and the hardware is going to be in huge demand. So you could see this company overnight, once there's a quantum attack, then companies like Arcade Quantum and Quantum Emotion and Seals Q are just going to, I mean, you see what happens when there's a major breakthrough for like, like let's look at a region cell, this bioscience company that was trading 30 or $40 for most of 2025, if I'm reading this correctly. And then what happened? 
massive, massive, massive explosion upward to the tune of like unfathomable returns on investment. And I think this is something that 3,600%, if we want to put a number on it, this is something that a quantum cybersecurity stock, if there is a, a strong quantum attack in the future by a, an adversarial group of humans, an adversarial nation, these stocks could really just have a very, very uh, hard to predict um, market value, um, meaning they could go up a lot and very quickly. Uh, but that's kind of the thesis around something like Seals Q. Um, so we've talked about three stocks. Two of them are electric vertical takeoff. And one of them is a, I think, an undervalued quantum computer stock. So if you like content like this, um, please consider leaving a like or subscribe. It really helps me out. And hope you enjoy it and have a great day. <clears throat> Not so fast. We have a executive order that my buddy just sent to me while I was editing this video. And check this out. President Donald Trump signed an executive order to strengthen the nation's cybersecurity by focusing on critical protections against foreign cyber threats and enhancing secure technology practices. The White House announced the order amends problematic elements of Obama and Biden era executive orders. Publicly traded companies in the cybersecurity space include Checkpoint, CrowdStrike, CyberArk, F5, FTNT, Okta, Palo Alto Networks. I can't say all these. And companies working in the quantum computing space include D-Wave, Rigetti, Seals Q, LAES, and quantum computing. So an executive order to strengthen the nation's cybersecurity. Monday, I'm adding more shares. All right, guys. See you later.